You know, us humans are blessed with something that not many mammals can really say they're blessed with. It's not the ability to climb trees with maximum ambidextery. That one's monkeys. It's not the ability to have an astute sense of tracking by smelling. That one's dogs and cats. And it's not even the ability to hunt and survive in the ocean. That one's fish. It's this kind of important part of our body that everyone on Twitter seems to not have. A brain. Our ability to cognitively think as humans has led our society from cavemen running in underwear made out of pine cones and sticking their schlongs between two slabs of rocks for pleasure to a somewhat advanced society doomed for failure. This doom for failure was always bound to come in some type of way for Earth. A main one being technology and the theory that we're all slowly gonna get wiped out from existence by a rogue group of robots, but everyone kinda already knows that theory. A theorem that I've personally come up with in the past couple of years is that we're not gonna get eliminated by some conventional technology sh I mean, it, it just sounds too fun. I wish a Terminator robot would come down to Earth and eradicate the human population with huge explosions. That shit looks too cool in the movies, I couldn't even get mad. But like we always do, humans are gonna do it first. And what dooms us for this outcome, you may ask? Attention span. Attention span is unironically one of the most important human assets that we have. You see, if you have a good attention span in life, then you can basically learn and do about anything 10 times faster than the human population now. I mean, our attention spans suck now. Not only are we already naturally lazy creatures, but we've lowered our attention span year by year, always due to being less needed for our human needs. Like back in the caveman days, if you didn't have a good attention span, what the were you gonna do? They had to accurately spear fish coming down a river, form traps with other to make sure that they're safe, and fight immense predator animals like mammoths and T-Rexes. But now it's all good, don't worry, we can just DoorDash and McChicken for $3.69. Honestly, f this whole video, DoorDash fees are gonna be the end of Earth. My point is that we've reached the era in life where it isn't needed as much to survive compared to back then. And I feel like everyone has a somewhat bad attention span now. Like when I was growing up from elementary school to high school, it was already bad on its own. Every kid thought they had some form of ADHD because their attention span was so god awful. I personally couldn't even focus on the teacher's words because after I missed one thing they said in the lesson, my brain just kind of sat there for a minute and was like, damn. I guess I'm feeling the next assignment. School as well really isn't the greatest environment for kids to actually utilize their attention span. Because kids go from being creative minds and playing with colorful toys with lights and are excited to take off in the world. And then they get thrown in a room with fluorescent lights and dingy desk with a teacher explaining some shit on a PowerPoint slide that we do not care about. So we already get set up by schools to have a horrible attention span in the future because kids could care less about using their attention span for something that they don't like. At least that's my theory. Like, have you ever seen how open you are as a kid? Kids will just go up to anybody and say whatever the they want. They'll point to a disabled man and be like, um, mommy, why does the man have no legs? His life must be awful. My point is that kids' emotions are always all out all the time. And when you get to a class and stop kids from pointing out all those emotions by telling them they can't point at the board and tell the teacher this lesson is boring as <laughs> then they just stop caring. But then on top of that, there's this little new thing that's been happening this last couple of years. I don't know if you guys have heard of social media. With social media's rise came people's attention spans decline. We have now evolved to the point where social media at first was just people emailing each other funny cat videos every once in a while to everyone's soul being sucked up by the video clips with pop-up text and a gta clip underneath it it's honestly just astonishing to me that one app changed the use chance of developing a brain i mean i'm making this video right now and i can't imagine how many mother already clipped up because i didn't put a gta clip underneath me with pop-up text it's sort of sad to see almost like of course our attention spans are bound to decline just due to the nature of human evolution all of this extra has just been accelerating the gas pedal of our demise to the max we can't even utilize the one thing that's integral for society development anymore. In general, we kind of just get shoved down a sh ton of content down our throats whether we like it or not because of algorithms. These algorithms online are almost meant to keep you overstimulated with a bunch of random ass videos. You see, algorithms are always tailored to your social media needs. But even then, with the rise of things like short form content, it's not the same anymore. You don't get recommended a bunch of random slew of videos that are targeted to make you comment almost. You could like the videos or you couldn't like them. You're almost guaranteed to see one dumb making a statement that you have to reply to. So you're most inclined to almost interact with the post, which drives up the app and drives up more people using it and drives up the revenue to the max. Apps nowadays and especially stuff like TikTok too are always tailored to all your needs. If you make a new account on any platform and scroll for a solid 10 minutes and watch some videos, why the f do they know every filament part of your existence for some reason? Like why the f when I mention something like fitness watches, I'm now recommended about a hundred different types of fitness watches by Google. I'm scrolling on TikTok and see like 10 reviews on fitness watches and Fitbits, and all of a sudden I really want to buy a fitness watch. Them are basically listening to us 24 7 and we just happily giggle along to it with no problem. And these algorithms have got too much grip on us nowadays. Now they're adding even more things to these apps too. Did y'all know TikTok has an entire live subscription service now? You can sub and give subs on a TikTok live. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
galaxies because galaxy means I have to knock this card down down. Don't even joke about sending galaxies. Who was paying for this shit? And it's like this for every other app. They're just all competing with each other and adding what not to it to make sure to keep your attention span on lock. But I can't even put the full blame on them. Like at the end of the day, it's your choice to do it. There's a reason why many people don't escape the so-called family guy TikTok pipe. Let me just give context on the Family Guy TikTok pipeline so you know what I'm talking about. Pretty much on TikTok, there's this little subgenre of videos that started to get recommended to everyone for no reason. It would be a Family Guy clip playing at the top of the TikTok, while at the bottom, it would possibly be the most random dog mobile gameplay you've ever seen. I have zero clue why they choose gameplay like this, but all right. And then to top it off, we of course got the subtitles to keep your underdeveloped brain from getting distracted. But a little weird thing about these videos too, is that a lot of the videos add Chinese subtitles. You can't tell me this ain't the work of China. My point being that videos like this directly correlate to people's attention span and the decline of it. This is a problem for some people and they get addicted to these type of videos. Imagine that it's just clip after clip after clip after clip, no break. The videos almost remind me of how when you hand a toddler a tablet of Coco Melon playing and they just turn into an absolute zombie. Epsom, this is teenagers and full grown people we're talking about. This is no different than a homeless man smoking crack on the street. Epsom, even even the homeless man has to put in more work because he has to beg for it. You get an unlimited supply of it at your fingertips. Just imagine this for a second, a group of homeless with a maximum amount of crack to smoke. We would be doomed, society would be and the worst part about this whole thing is that Family Guy is not the only show they do this to. I know this because I talked to my friend one day and he told me there was some point where he got addicted to clips of regular show on TikTok. It was the same thing as the Family Guy clips, except you guessed it, regular show clips. And it's to the point where they do this on every single type of media of short form content. Like short form content in general is already supposed to be extremely addicting. But add all these elements on top of each other and it's like, mwah, chef's kiss. If you get addicted to these type of clips, then you're no different than a baby watching Coco Melon and playing with one of those little shapey things while sucking their thumbs. It is very, very easy to fall down this rabbit hole and I definitely have before. Even the global attention span has dropped 25% from 2000 to 2015. Now we're at about an average attention span per human at 8.25 seconds. And to put that into perspective for you guys, the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So a goldfish has a better attention span than humans now. And that was just in 2015. I can't imagine how much worse it's going to be when the stats get updated in the next couple of years. They're gonna have to invent some type of new negative number we've reached at this point. I feel like all this lost attention span has also contributed to people being 10 times less patient, which I can vouch for myself because I am the most impatient mother than I ever was in life. Like, bro, if you take more than 10 seconds to get to your point, why are you even talking to me? I don't care. I notice myself sometimes get mad at the most mini school type of problems in life. Like when I order something on DoorDash, if the time for delivery goes from 35 minutes to 37 minutes due to a delay, I throw a fit, write a bad review on the app, contact the support team immediately, telling them how disgusted I am with the service and that I want to refund the assistance or I won't ever use their app again. Same thing with packages for me. Like if Amazon f tells me it's a guaranteed two day delivery, they better give me my sh two days. Amazon and them fucking delaying my packages. I need my flashlight come on amazon point being that this can even affect intellectual people like me the problem also nowadays is that attention span is also affecting things in real life we can take something like music i'm telling you right now you'd rather be known as an artist who's a nobody than an artist who's a. Uh... hey yo aren't you that one who made that tiktok song there's no coming back after that one. you're a tiktok artist now you're not even considered a human now i know i talked about this before but the fact that people really go to concerts and only know that one popular part of a song because of tiktok is sad you could argue that well that's because they only play one part of the song and it's not the artist's fault. And trust me, I know that. I feel bad for the music artist. I mean, at least back then, people would know the words to the artist's most popular song. But now it's about the first couple of words and that's really it. They could even play the entire song on a TikTok. And since people's brains are so hardwired to only hear one part, their brain is not even gonna process the rest of the song. Even something as small as memes now require a little to no attention span. Like, have you ever realistically thought of a Gen Z meme and what it is? It's usually some random clip that's low quality with random audio. Audio. At least memes back then would somewhat require you to read what it actually says. We went from top and bottom text memes in 2012 to something like down in Ohio memes. What happened in 10 years? Now, I'm not saying this to hate on new memes or be like, oh, I'm some smart intrinsic guy that only cares about old stuff. But I'm just saying there has to be some correlation to this, like the short content and then the memes, all that, they kind of mesh together. So these last couple of months, I've been learning ways to help combat these strange issues. Which, you know, less attention span to be sucked from your brain, the better you'll be at it. And you can finally escape the endless video. Video clip plus gameplay below it plus pop-up text short form fill 
content. Tip number one, delete the apps. I mean, this is really the option you could do and just fix the problem. But just like a Detroit crack addict, you'll be back for more. So tip number two, start using in moderation. It's much easier to use things in moderation than not use them at all. Because at the end of the day, the internet converts to everything in real life now. So I gotta see every goddamn thingamajig or whatever is going on in the internet. But every once in a while, I just take a break. Sometimes you just really gotta sit there and stare at a wall. Embrace your inner NPC ways because that's really what we all are at the end of the day. NPCs. But the question is, would you rather be an NPC with your own thoughts or be an NPC by the internet's thoughts and repeating the same memes and trends you saw on TikTok? Step number two, distract yourself. I usually notice when I get stuck in the loop of doing something, I always say I'm gonna change my actions out loud, but I never really do it. Kinda like how every guy has that one thing in their friend group that they always say they're gonna do and they never do. Bruh, in the future, we're making a gaming house and making it on YouTube. Bruh, in the future, we're opening a business and escaping the Matrix. Bruh, in the future, we're making it out the hood. Coming to bed, honey. So instead of falling down this rabbit hole like everybody else, I kind of just do it. Talk always does less than action. Think of it like this. You never announce you're going to take a massive shit somewhere. You just kind of do it. So do the same thing with anything else. And lastly, step number three or tip number three, I don't care at this point, train your willpower. The willpower to do something that you don't want to do is pretty strong. Yeah, you can distract yourself, but you still need the power to not go back and cope. Once you put the iron titanium resistance, you're pretty much straight. There's multiple ways to do this. One, which I call the reverse method. If you're addicted to TikTok, open YouTube shorts. If you delay something you do, do it right then if you can't get women date men and with all that being said you made it to the end of the video give yourself a pat on the back because not many people were able to do that in fact my average video watch time is half of the video it could be that people's attention spans are where my videos are just complete utter garbage i like to think it's the first one it makes me feel better follow me on twitter instagram and tiktok as always i love you guys consensually and until next time i'm out